Hey there, Timothy Karambat, founder of Memplex Labs. And today I'm actually going to be doing an updated version of all of my Chroma videos because they came out with some new improvements since my last tutorials. I'm going to basically delist the other videos just so you can get to them for reference. Um, and these will be the new videos. Just so you know, let's look at the video. Today is November 21st, 2023. Obviously, this tech moves fast and Chroma is a fast working team. Let's go to their GitHub, figure out what the current version of Chroma is that we're gonna be working with. And that is 0.4.18. If we are way in the future and this version is different, your mileage may vary. But in general, we're gonna start with something simple. So today I'm gonna to show you how do you run Chroma? It's gonna take us five minutes, right? How do you just get it working on your local machine? And also how do you use the API key persist the storage, make it to where each time you need to update to the latest version of Chroma, you don't blow away 100,000 of your embeddings or anything like that. So this is gonna be easy, fast, secure, and it's gonna work with pretty much every other integration you can either build or work with. Let's get into it, take us maybe about five, 10 minutes. So you used to have to go to the GitHub, clone it, build it, whatever, that has been solved. Let's actually just pull in the image from Docker, run it in Docker, and call it a day. So of course, a requirement for this is you need Docker. So here I am in Docker desktop. If I go to images, you'll see I have Chroma DB Chroma, which is going to be the latest version, and I already have that pulled in. But to do this, all you would need to do is open up a fresh new terminal. Let's make the text a little bit bigger so everybody can see. And you would do Docker pull, and it's Chroma DB slash Chroma. You'll see that defaults to the latest tag. It says that it's already existing and it turns out that actually there's an update that can be run. So, okay, new version got released, cool. So we're gonna wait for this to complete and then once we're done, we'll see that the image is updated in Docker. Okay, so the latest Docker version just got pulled in. I actually just realized that the 0.4.18 package got published two hours ago. So this is very, very fresh video right now. So you're getting the best. Your second question is, okay, well, we got it pulled in. How do we run it? That's actually really easy, but also, We'll get into why that's maybe not the best idea to just jump into it. The easiest way to run it is to just run docker run, and then you want to expose the port 8000. It can be any host port you want, but you want your target port to be 8000 because that's the port Chroma runs on in the Docker container. And then we just would specify Chroma DB Chroma. And what this is going to do is this is going to build a Chroma instance in Docker for us that we can connect to on our local machine in order to basically start saving embeddings and using all of the power that Chroma comes with. Okay, so we can see that the server is now running and it's running internally in Docker on port 8000. And since we connected the ports, I should be able to go to localhost 8000 slash API slash V1 and we return a nanosecond heartbeat, which means that our Chroma instance is finally online and we are good to go. We can start saving embeddings and doing all of that. So let's save an embedding and then I'll show you why maybe the command we just ran is not actually the best command. So here I'm in a local instance of anything LLM because this is just an easy way for me to upload documents and PDFs and store them as embeddings. So we're gonna connect to Chroma. We're gonna go to that HTTP slash localhost 8000 we have no API key or header. We didn't set one. I'll show you how to do that, but we're gonna click save. We're now saved. We're gonna jump in, go to new workspace, call this Chroma, go in here. I already have uploaded some docs to anything LLM. This is just for me. If you have a script to upload embeddings, use that same effect. And there we are. And so now if we are to go to slash collections, we should have one single collection named Chroma. So we're good. We have stored an embedding. If you are to go into Docker and let's go to the container running this Docker instance and we are to stop it. So stopping a container is like pausing it. Um, the data should be persistent as long as this container does not get destroyed. If there is a new version, 0.19 of Chroma comes out, the problem is, is you can't take the data that's in this instance and easily port it to a new container, which is, as you can imagine, a big problem. You're stuck and pinned on this version because all of your data is within this container. But let's just start it up again. And as we look at the Docker logs, we just have to wait until the initial boot script completes. And you'll see that the server will then say UV, UV corn, 
UVI corn. I don't know how to pronounce it, to be honest. I, I, if someone knows, put it in the comments and we're booted. All right, so let's revisit that same URL. Our data should still be there. And it is, we've refreshed it. I'll keep refreshing it. You can't tell, but I've refreshed it. Let's say that Chroma comes out with a brand new version and we want to take advantage of whatever the newest stuff is. In fact, actually, they just released a new version that now has multimodality. So how would you upgrade? Well, if you did it the way that we just did it, you can't. So here is actually what you should do when you run Docker so that you can actually have your data go between containers that you spin up of Chroma. This is a much more reliable way of doing things so you don't wind up with your data isolated and fixed on a single Chroma instance. To run it with a persistent storage between boots is actually, let's just make a temporary folder essentially, or just a storage folder on our host machine. So this is going to be where our data from the Docker container gets written to, so that basically no matter how many containers we spin up, they can all point to the same thing, regardless of how many times we do it. Easiest way to do this is I am in terminal, I'm just on my desktop, you can, make a folder wherever you have write permissions. The easiest way to do it is let's just do make directory and we're gonna make a folder on my desktop called Chroma and we'll just call it that. And so we'll CD into Chroma. And you can see there is nothing in this directory. Now we're going to run a Docker command that looks very similar but is not the same. And you'll see it here. And so we'll, we're gonna add an argument. We're gonna add a volume, so dash V. And then we're going to add an absolute path to this new folder that we just created, which is on my desktop, and it's called Chroma. And don't forget that trailing slash to denote that it's a folder. Then we're gonna do a colon slash Chroma slash Chroma. Now, I'm not gonna get into why we're doing colon slash Chroma slash Chroma. It has to do with how Docker mounts local storage to Docker storage. It's in the docs, it's in their Docker Compose if you really wanna know, but honestly, just know that it works. So we're gonna run this command and let it build the container. Okay, and so our container was live, that took like two seconds. And actually I wanna show you, if you go into Docker desktop or do this through the CLI and you inspect the container, you should see that there is a new mount, Chroma slash Chroma is mounted to users, Tim desktop Chroma, yours would be mounted wherever you assigned it. Now, if we go into our browser and go to the slash collections API endpoint, it's empty because we just created a new container. There's nothing to save yet. So back in anything LLM, I'm gonna take these two files, move them over, save them. All right, workspace is embedded, refresh. We now have our data again. So let's go look at actually where it got saved. Because I didn't run Docker in Damien mode, that tab is occupied right now. So instead, I'm just gonna open up a new tab, CD into the folder that we specified to mount to. And if I do LS, you'll now see there is a hash here, which is not important for you to really know about. And then there is the Chroma SQL Lite file. So this is our data. This is our Chroma data. And any Docker container we start with, we can just mount this same directory and it'll preload our data on boot. So we're done, that's it. So let me show you that deleting my Docker container doesn't actually delete my data. Let's go back to Docker. In here, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna what would normally blow away all my embeddings, I'm just gonna click delete. I'm gonna delete the whole thing. Okay, so our Docker container got blown away. That's it, that's all of our data. Now if we go to the folder and I type ls, the data's still there, so we did save it. So how do I run another Docker container that can just inherit this data? Because let's say I upgraded, I did docker pull chroma db chroma, and then it's, and let's just say there's a new image that got pulled in, it got updated, great. We're on the latest image again. Okay, cool, just rerun that same command with the same mounted volume. If you move the file around, make sure you change where you saved it to. And as long as you mount to slash chroma slash chroma, whatever is in this directory, which should be a folder of hashes and a SQLite, a chroma.sqlite file, you will boot with your old data. So let's do that. Okay, so our container rebooted. Let's go back to the endpoint and then just refresh it. We should see a collection here that looks just like this. And look at that. I'm refreshing right now and we do. That means that we were now able to successfully totally destroy our instance, reboot it and keep the data. This is an important thing to know because if you set environment variables to perhaps set an API key, if you wanna do that, 
you can't change Docker container environment variables without destroying the container itself. So now you see why this little skill right here is so important because we need to sometimes change our API keys or do whatever. And so you can't keep a container alive for its entire life. So it's important to have the data saved actually on your host machine. Now for the last part of this video, because I promised it in the beginning, I'm gonna show you how to use the API key setup for you to be able to basically just pass an API key like you normally would and have a authenticated Chroma version. It used to be that Chroma didn't have authentication built in. They added it very quickly, I might add. And so that's why I gotta redo these videos because the newest stuff has authentication built in simplifies the process dramatically. So let's show you how to do it locally. And then in future videos, we'll do it on AWS and render. So I still have my data persisted in this Chroma folder. What I wanna do is just simply add authentication. So the way you do this is actually, it looks complicated, but I promise you it isn't. And so I'm gonna bring up a note that shows you what it does. Okay, so you can't see me on this screen, but you can see that we have this Docker run command. Then we set our port as we normally would. And we even do our mount to, well, we change the folder, so let's call it Chroma, right? And our mount is even in the same place and the, all the commands look exactly the same, but you'll notice dash E commands are actually how you set environment variables in Docker. And you're probably wondering where in the world I got these from. In trichroma.com or docs.trichroma.com, if you go to getting started and then, oh, I'm sorry, if you go to usage guide, and then go to authentication, you can actually see that there's basic auth for using a base64 password. I don't wanna do that. Um, and then there's static auth, which is more like an API token, and that's what we want. There are a couple things that you can have here. There are these different providers of HTTP TP password, and then there are also these config server auth credentials. If you use this top example, you will only be using a authorization bearer type token, which if you're watching this channel, you probably know what I'm talking about. I want to use a more simple method, which is basically you add a header to your request that says X hyphen chroma hyphen token, and you just put the token and that's authentication. I want to use that. So you can actually copy these environment variables from here, omit the export part, and this is where we land. So you can see this chroma server auth credential stuff I'm specifying the text of new token, and I want to use the X underscore Chroma token. You cannot customize this. It must say X underscore Chroma token or authorization in all caps. You can't change this. Don't try it. I already did. So let's run that Docker command with those environment variables in here. Now, what we should expect to do is boot a Docker container that when I try to visit that URL in the browser we've been visiting says unauthorized. And instead we have to specify a header in the Git request and the token for this is a very non-safe new hyphen token, but let's try it anyway. So as to not bore you out of your minds, I have Postman pulled up so that we can actually run the post requests for both Git and post and all of that. And I have it pointed at the same URL, the localhost 8000 API v1 collection. I go to headers, nothing special in the headers. Our Docker container appears to be running, so let's just run that same Git request we've been running in the browser. We get an error, unauthorized a 401, which is correct. The way to remedy that is to add our special token of X Chroma token. This text, by the way, is not case sensitive, so if you were wondering, it isn't. And then our token was called new token. Let's send that same Git request with our API token. We now get our collection result. And if we try to do it in a browser where we can't set a header, you can see we get unauthorized, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Last little caveat before we tie up this video, because all of these learnings relate to hosting on cloud as well. And I'm sure your question is, oh no, I accidentally committed my token to GitHub, my Chroma access token or your API token. Well, with Docker, you actually can't set an environment variable while a container is running. Uh, so what do we do now? Well, we have persistent storage stored on our host machine. So all we need to do is actually just delete our container, go back into our terminal, and then just update this, the Chroma underscore server underscore auth underscore credentials, my gosh, um, and just change new token to literally anything else, our data will persist and our token to access the data will change. The reason this is important is, and I know we're only on localhost, but the reason this is important is because you never know when you might need to change the 
kind of access token you are using, the header that you want to use. Maybe you want to switch to authorization. Who knows? I don't, you know, whatever you want to do. And so let's boot that container. And what we should expect is this previously working postman request to fail. We have to change the token to Hunter2, which is classic, and then we should get the correct response again. So let me just show you that because I like to show as opposed to tell. Okay, so the Docker server is running. Let's hop back into Postman. Unauthorized. Let's change our token to Hunter2. We're done. All right, so that's the end of this video. You now have a fully working and authenticated locally running version of ChromaDB. This is on the version 0.4.18, but there will probably be another one soon. And so when there is, using these methods, you can upgrade to the latest version of Chroma, as long as it's not breaking changes, which they'll tell you if they are, and not have any data loss or worry about any of that. In the next videos, I'm actually going to build off of this knowledge on how to easily deploy on AWS. I have a template for you. And also how to run this kind of service exactly the way I just showed you with credentials on a service like Render. If you have any questions or comments or compliments, that would be nice to hear. You can leave them in the comments. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video.